Welcome to Little Badminton Church for our service this Sunday. Today we are celebrating the Ascension and the readers are Lisa Bailey and Piers Tallulah, members of the community here in Badminton. Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus you are Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shut forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be Salvation. Let us rejoice in the strength of our salvation. 
The reading is taken from Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. When the apostles met together with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time give the kingdom back to Israel? Jesus said to them, The times and occasions are set by my Father's own authority, and it is not for you to know when that they will be. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power, and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up to heaven as they watched him, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They still had their eyes fixed on the sky as he went away, when two men, dressed in white, suddenly stood beside them and said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking up at the sky? This Jesus, who was taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way that you saw him go to heaven. Then the apostles went back to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is about a kilometre away from the city. They entered the city and went up to the room where they were staying. Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Patriot and Judas, son of James. They gathered frequently to pray as a group together with the women and with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Let God arise, and let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Like as the smoke vanisheth, so shalt thou drive them away. And like as wax melteth at the fire, so let the ungodly perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad, and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. They sing unto God, and sing praises unto his name. Magnify him that rideth upon the heavens, as it were upon an horse. Praise him in his name, Jah, and rejoice before him. He is a father of the fatherless, and defendeth the cause of the widows. Even God in his holy habitation. He is the God that maketh men to be of one mind in an house, and bringeth the prisoners out of captivity. But letteth the runner gates continue in scarceness. O God, when thou wentest forth before the people, when thou wentest through the wilderness, 
the earth shook and the heavens dropped at the presence of God. Even as Sinai also was moved at the presence of God, who is the God of Israel. Thou, O God, sentest a gracious rain upon thine inheritance, and refreshest it when it was weary. Thy congregation shall dwell therein. For thou, O God, hast of thy goodness prepared for the poor. Sing unto God, O ye kingdoms of the earth. O sing praises unto the Lord, who sitteth in the heavens over all from the beginning. Though he doth send out his voice, yea, and that a mighty voice, ascribe ye the power to God over Israel. His worship and strength is in the clouds. O God, wonderful art thou in thy holy places. Even the God of Israel, he will give strength and power unto his people. Blessed be God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 17, verses 1 to 11. These words spake Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may also glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested, manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee, for I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name, whose whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, as we are.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endure thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people save thy people and bless thine inheritance give peace in our time O Lord because there is none other that fighteth for us but only thou O God God may clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from God, the King of glory, thou hast exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to thy kingdom in heaven. We beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send thy Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hast safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Church and the world, and thank God for his goodness. We pray for our church, for our bishops, Rachel and Robert, and the church throughout this diocese. We pray particularly for the parish of, uh, sorry, for the school of Hardwick Parochial Academy, for Jenny Dwight, the head teacher, and for Longley Church of England Primary Academy, Penny Howard. We pray for the staff at the Anglican Communion Office in London and the United Nations offices in Geneva and New York. We pray for all members of the Anglican Communion around the world, especially for the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend Justin, Welby, and all primates and bishops. For members of the Anglican Consultative Council, for the Secretary-General, Most Reverend Dr. Josiah, 
Idawu Feron. This week we pray that we may be advocates for human flourishing through initiatives which combat injustice, environmental destruction, exclusion and isolation. We pray that as a church we may use sport, music and art to build relationships and share the Christian faith. Pray that we may connect with new housing developments in innovative ways. That we may invest in people and programs which excite young people to explore and grow in faith. We pray for the Diocese of Exeter, Bishops Robert and Nicholas and Jackie. For the Church in Norway, for Bishop Olav. Pray for the Diocese of El Camino Real, Bishop Lucinda. We remember those baptised at this time in our parishes, particularly Teddy Gardner and Elsie May and Evie Rose Ford. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our Queen and Government, for all suffering from isolation or from the virus. O Lord our God, source of all goodness and love, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Now and always. Amen. Pray for those married at this time, particularly Jonathan and Olivia Dixon. We pray for the sick for the bereaved, for Lorraine Hawkins, Jenny Harris. Pray for those who are not well, for George Winch, any who need our prayers at this time. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Let's remember the departed and their families, particularly remembering Joyce Emer, Graham Baker. For those whose years and minds fall at this time, Rolly Childerly and Sandra Tucker. May the souls of the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and hast promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. May I speak in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. That sense of being a small community and the need to look after each other is something that perhaps we need to remember, because we too are often living in small communities. And yet small communities can be strong when people pull together and care for one another. Sometimes the church can feel as if it is just an institution, another branch of our national life, a national treasure, and that we can treat each other at arm's length, as though we were in some massive organisation. That may have been possible when most of society was christened and a good proportion of the population went to church on a Sunday. But when the church or village is more likely to be a small group of people who see each other week in, week out, that sense of being like the very early church bears a closer resemblance to our reality. 
But sadly, due to individual problems and histories, we don't always treat each other as we should. We fall out and get divided into camps, as if we were members of some big institution, which we are not. Of course, no human community will ever be completely free of human frailty. Hatred and malice is part of the nature of any human community. But the prevailing ethos of a small community needs to be one of forgiveness and toleration, especially when we are so few and our job is so great. Next week is Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit gave the Apostles the courage to go out into the world and to tell people about faith in Jesus. Quite some task. But first, Jesus gave them comfort and protection. He gave them peace. This was a period of being a small community. A community, let us not forget, of men who were broken. Their leader had been crucified, and they bore the scars of having betrayed him. It was not a community of idealists who were frolicking around Jerusalem. They were in fear of their lives. If they could do it, so can we. Henry Nouwen, the 12th century Dutch theologian, wrote this. The day-to-day -day reality of life in any kind of community is often very far from ideal. Life in community dedicated to welcoming the broken is perhaps even more costly because it is so obvious when you fail. There is no escape from the expensive vulnerability of being alongside people who know exactly how broken you yourself are and exactly where your wounds are most sensitive. Nguyen is speaking about communities of vulnerable people, but he could as well be talking about small Christian communities like ours. Even those who live in a small English village will very often know the wounds of others, the brokenness of others' lives. It is difficult to keep anything that happens in a village secret. And yet everyone has their secrets, their own wounds, some secrets even to themselves. For how many of us really know ourselves? How many of us really know our own wounds? They can run very deep. For the church to be genuine, we need to love one another. And that means owning up to our own wounds, as well as respecting the wounds of others. It means being patient and allowing others the freedom to speak when they feel ready, not when we are ready. But all the while we continue to treat each other as if we are just members of some national institution, distant pillars of humanity, with no real engagement, then we are nothing like that early church. Nothing like the church for which Jesus died and prayed and blessed as he left them and ascended to his throne in heaven. When he went away, he left us in charge of the church. Us, you and me, to be the sort of community that mirrors the love and care that he showed to his community of disciples and which Christians down the ages have tried to live up to. We in the church need to show the world that, that love in our generation. Instead, what we show the world is often the very reverse. The love of Jesus broke down barriers, ate and drank with sinners and tax collectors, railed against the hypocrisy of the religious establishment, lifted up the woman caught shamefully, told stories of forgiving fathers, generous and compassionate strangers, patience with the sins of others. How close is your community to really following Jesus? Amen.
So let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen.